Uh, the power play continues here from Toronto in the slot with Hockey Hall of Famer Phil Esposito right here on NHL Network Radio on Sirius XM. Uh, the phone lines will be open at the top of the hour. Phil, today we're talking about hockey's hardest hitters. Oh, okay. What was the what was the hardest you've ever been hit in a hockey game, Phil? By Jay Wells. Okay. In uh, Los Angeles, I was crossing the blue red line with my head down and took a sucker pass, and I'd never and I was relatively I was playing for the Rangers, so think about it, Ted, because I was older too. Mm-hmm. That and Dennis Podfed, yeah, cross checked me from behind on my back. That was the two hardest things ever. Well, I, I'm guessing that Dennis <laughs> is going to get a few votes here when we all put up the phone lines here as far Probably. as hockey's hardest hitters are concerned. Probably. Uh, former National Hockey League defenseman, head coach of the Orlando Solar Bears of the ECHL is Drake Barahowski, who joins us here today. How you doing, Drake? Good. How are you guys? We're okay, Drake. Doing real well. Uh, what was the, the hardest you mm-hmm. ever were hit when it came to your yeah. National Hockey League play 549 career games? Uh, there's probably too many guys I, to, to mention. I've been hit so many times. <laughs> My my vote, I think, would go for Wendell Clark. He's got to be one of the the, the toughest uh, open ice hitters, and uh, I'm sure a lot of uh, defensemen were afraid to uh, go up against him. Yeah. Well, Drake, you're in the state of Florida, and uh, I I love the fact that the Solar Bears are back in action. Uh, I think it's just absolutely terrific. Are you enjoying yourself? You know what? It's been fantastic. The, the fans have really... Uh, climbed on board. Uh, they've received us really well, and we're out in the community trying to be uh, really involved in the community as well. We play at a beautiful rink uh, at the sure Amway Center. Our practice, our practice facility is second to none, so I think all the players and uh, the fans, both sides of it, are, are really enjoying uh, this whole experience. You know, it's interesting, Drake. I, I, I just see that you kind of uh kind of had a switch in goaltenders as John Curry's back with you now, and Darcy Kemper goes up to Houston. Uh, we just had John Cooper, the head coach of the Syracuse Crunch, on with us before you, and you know he says he's so proud when guys get that call to the National Hockey League, and likewise, you must be pretty happy when guys make that step up the ladder and get to the American Hockey League with a chance to play for the Houston Arrows. You know what? That's my whole goal is to develop these kids and uh, help them to, to achieve those goals and dreams. You know, it's I was lucky and fortunate enough to uh, have played and lived the dream and uh, to, to kind of help these kids uh, get to that next level and be a small part of it uh, yeah. would be a dream for me. When did you get into coaching, Dave, Drake? Uh, about five years ago. I uh, six, This is my sixth year now. I was an assistant coach in, uh, in Brampton and then uh, in the OHL and then in Barrie. And then I went to Peoria. St. Louis hired me, and I was an assistant coach there for three years. And I've always wanted to be a head coach, and uh, this opportunity came up, and I interviewed, and I was fortunate enough to uh, get the job. And like I said, it's what? it's incredible here. You you wouldn't think down south uh, it would be as as uh, hot a ticket or as, as popular as it is, but uh, the fans really love it, and we're drawing really well. I know you are, but, but what was the biggest challenge for you as a coach after being a player? Could you understand a little bit more now why a coach would do things? Or, <laughs> I mean, as a player, I'm sure you did like I did. Who the hell? What's wrong with this guy? <laughs> as a coach, sure. right? You know, you you do uh, you do realize why they uh, why they did the things they did, and and uh, now you have to uh, actually uh, pass those kinds of things on to the players. But you know, I think times have changed, and uh, players now need to know why things are being done, and yes. um, you have to explain yourself a lot more to the the newer generation and. I think uh, communication is a huge part. Back when I played, really, communication, it was great if you got it, but uh, you never expected it. Now you have to talk to the players and you have to show them video and make them understand uh, what's what's going wrong. Uh, Drake Barahowski, former National Hockey League defenseman, head coach of the Orlando Solar Bears of the ECHL, joining us right now. Uh, Drake, uh, Matt McIlvain's uh, one of your assistants, and you've got Ray Shepard as a special assistant as well. Tell us oh, about cool. Ray, of course, and, and many NHL fans remember Ray for... Uh, for what he did in terms of putting the puck in the net back in his NHL career. How has he helped out as well? You know, I, I'm, I like I said, I'm so fortunate to have these guys around me. Uh, Ray comes in, you know, whenever he can, and, uh, you know, he's he's always a, an ear that I can, I can talk into to see how things are. And um, with his experience, you know, I think it brings another another angle, another view for the players to, 
to have. And uh, anytime they they can talk and sit with him, or he can show him a little trick on the ice that maybe I don't know, or that Matt doesn't really really know, uh, it'll benefit the players. When I put together the team that I wanted here, and I put together the coaching staff, and Ray and I started talking, that was one of my selling points: was that you're going to have the experience of two NHL guys to come and talk to and. Uh, they can spread the knowledge that they've learned over the years, and I, I think a lot of the guys really enjoy uh, learning from them. You know, we just had DJ Crombie play a couple games for our, for us, and uh, the players loved him, him in the room. They they tried to take as much knowledge as they could from him while he was there. Uh, when you you guys travel, uh, I know you've got, of course, the Florida Everblades, probably your closest rival, is it not? Yes, it is. Uh, but when you travel up north. Do you guys go by bus still, like years well, ago? It, it depends how far we go. Usually, uh, like to South Carolina and all those places, we'll bus. It's about a seven or eight hour bus trip. But uh, when we go way up north uh, uh, to to Reading and stuff, we'll fly up there and bus around up there. So it's not yeah. uh, not the iron lung like back in the days when I played. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> well, you want to talk about the road trip too, Drake? You guys are getting ready to go up to to California to to go to Ontario, and then you've got Las Vegas for a couple as well, right? Yeah, you know what? It's it's pretty neat going to these new cities. I haven't been there to see the hockey yet. Uh, back when I played in the IHL, they had these those teams in in Vegas anyway. So I'm kind of excited to see the different uh, the different uh, side uh, how they play and. Uh, what their style of game will be compared to our side. Now, with John Curry back in the fold here, are you carrying three goaltenders right now? Well, one of our goalies is injured right now. He's just kind of coming back off injury. But I, I've got three great goalies. I have uh, Mike Broder, and then I've got Toy, Hannah Toyvin. So I've got three goalies that have NHL experience. So, um, you know, in this league, it's hard with call ups and uh, guys going down with injuries. You always want to have uh, a couple extra guys uh, around just in case. And, uh, like I said, I've been blessed that these guys called me and they're uh, on my team. Um, who's the guy on your team that sort of stands out for you that you 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 count on more than anybody else? Is there one guy who has a chance maybe to move up? You know, I, I like to think they all have a chance, especially with my coaching. But, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, That's good. It, it's, we, we try and build our, our team around uh, the system, and one player isn't going to make or break uh our system where we want to play a solid team game. And, um, you know, a lot of these kids, it's, it's amazing. Like I said, when I played the East coast league, wasn't as competitive as it is now. Now it's a business. There's, it's great hockey, especially now with the, the lockout, uh, happening. Yeah. It, it's pushed, it's pushed everybody down. So it's, it's great hockey. It's competitive every night. And you've got to have your guys motivated and you have to do your work on the other teams in order to be successful. Drake, thanks very much for your time. Uh, best of luck here as you guys head west here in a couple of days. Yes, sir. Thanks for, thanks for having me, guys. Anytime. I, I'd love to be on. Excellent you got stuff. got it, Drake. Thank you. Uh, Drake Barahowski joining us.